going to read the Bible in First Samuel chapter 11. First Samuel. First Samuel, First Samuel, chapter one, uh, not eleven. First Samuel, chapter one. First Samuel, chapter one, verse eleven. And the word of the Lord tells us. Then she made a vow and said, "O Lord of hosts." If you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued continue praying before the Lord that El Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We exalt your majesty because your glory is in our midst. Your great blessing, Lord. Speak to us as we meditate on your, on your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. We may be seated, my brethren. The text of the word speaks speaks of a woman that was marked by the perseverance. A servant that was marked by prayer. Hannah. She didn't ask, didn't ask a blessing for herself. Anna was asking for a blessing for her home. Anna didn't have children. The Lord revealed tonight that a few servants have been thinking in their daily lives. When will I, will I be able to say, my house and myself will serve the Lord? The Lord have made me a promise that He would save us. Because God is a God of promises. The Lord said He was going to save, that He was going to enter there, that He was going to transform my husband, He was going to change the life of my son. But the days passed by, and many times, this word went up to the heart of some of the server, servants saying, when will be the day in which I will go, be able to hold the, ho the hand of my partner and go to church and see my partner sitting beside me? And Hannah was the only wife of her husband that didn't have children. The word says that Hannah she was uh, humiliated by the other wives because at those times not having children is shameful. Hannah, for the other women, or even for the society, she was an invalid. And how many times people ask us, where is your God? Why should we go to service every day? Why should we pray so much? Sometimes pe people look at us and they don't think much of us. Sometimes you may even have felt humiliate, humiliated like Hannah. But the Lord had made the promise to Hannah. His word, He never changed. 
the Lord that told you that you and your house is going to serve the Lord, His promise is not going to fall to the ground. His blessing will arrive. The Lord also said, glorify before the blessing arrives. And that's what we're doing to, tonight. This is an action of faith, my brethren. This is an action of faith. You will glorify and you will believe that the Lord is already operating. Hannah needed a child. God needed a judge. Hannah needed a, a child. But God needed a prophet. Hannah needed a son. But God needed a priest. Observe my brethren. Over everything that Hannah needed, God had much more for her. Maybe you be thinking, I only need salvation of my the salvation of my son, of my husband. I need my my home to be complete. But the Lord's already preparing them to be a, a, an arch or deacon or who knows a pastor in the house of the Lord. Maybe you need an open door, and the Lord is going to place in your hands your own business. Sometimes you want to measure the Lord with our our own metrics. We want to limit the Lord and how far God can go, but He can do much more. What God can do is undescribable. What the Lord is doing here tonight is wonderful. The plans of the Lord, they are greater than ours, my brethren. And the word says that Hannah would go up to the temple with her husband. And her plea was, Lord, I need a child. It wasn't in the first uh, service in which Hannah received her blessing. The word says that branches the blessing and the, the experience that Hannah had. But a few historians of the word and scholars they say that Hannah pleaded for 20 years for a child maybe there is someone here that is praying and fasting for a long time for a family member maybe you may even have forgotten because the time so much time has passed but the Lord is bringing to your memory tonight the person that you used to pray for so much. The service tonight is our service of prayer. And we are going to exercise our faith. Lord, save the person that I love so much. Lord, save my family member. Don't let them die. Hannah would go to the temple and say, God, give me a child. And the word says that Eli He would only, he would only see her moving her lips and pleading in her heart. And what do we learn from this, my brethren? What we learn is something wonderful, because our God is uh, uh, the Lord, is the one who hears uh, when we murmur. She didn't have to uh, shout out loud to everyone or show to everyone that she was paying a price. It was in her silence. Is in the whisper that the Lord hears our prayer. It is in the silence that the Lord hears our prayer. And then came a, came a day in which Hannah, she received her blessing. The word says that Samuel was born. Samuel was born. The coherence, the logic would be to imagine that Hannah would lay down with, 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 with her husband and Samuel was, would be born. But we are people that believe in miracles. 
We are people that exercise our faith. I don't know you, my brethren, but I believe that Hannah already had come down from the service pregnant, pregnant and with Samuel or her womb. But the blessing was not through Eli. The blessing was from God. You may be leaving here tonight with your blessing in your hands. You may be leaving this place tonight with your Samuel, you in your womb. Santa, you may not be feeling. Hannah didn't feel in the first days. But as time passed by, her belly grew up until Samuel was born. The days will pass by. There are answers that the Lord will bring with one week, two, three. And others may take eight, nine months, which is the period of a gestation. But how, as, how long it takes, we'll still be praying, pleading. We'll continue praising the name of the Lord. The promises of the Lord will be fulfilled in, in our midst. The Lord is moving amongst us.
Glory to God. I invite the brethren to stand up. I'm going to pray, finishing the service. Lord, we want to praise your name, Lord. Because once again, we are in your house. And we know that our prayers have come to you, a turn of grace. And we know, Lord, that you will answer each prayer in your time. Let me ask, Lord, that you continue operating in our hearts and that we may be able to trust in you, Lord. Receive our prayer and our praises and that you may turn them into blessings to your entire church. The prayer we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Our time is a little short, so we're going to pray for the families. So I want the families to gather together quickly, whatever you are. Look for your family members. They're going to give priority with a prayer for the families. Right? You can get up and look for your father, mother, or your wife and husband. Amen. So, hey amen, let's go. Uh, our shares and deacons, two and two, let's pray for the families.